lecture for our eighth virtual session, which will be a uh, University of Illinois. But before we do that, I'd like to go over the functions available to you during this presentation. First and foremost, your microphone will be muted throughout the presentation. In the bottom center of the screen, you will see a Q&A chat option. This is where you can ask questions throughout the presentation. After or even during the presentation, we'll be going over those questions. Last but not least, this live webinar will be recorded and will be shared to your student email along with the video being available in our Career Center's YouTube channel. Now we'll turn it over to Nicole Holtz-Claw-Stone for University of Illinois. Take it away. Hi, thank you. I'm going to share my screen. Sorry. Sorry, lots of reminders coming up. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to the students here at, at Cal State San Bernardino. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I represent University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and I'm in the Master of Science in Health Technology program as the Assistant Director. Um, I want to start by just talking a little bit about the importance of health in our lives. And I pulled out some quotes here that just help kind of really emphasize that health is one of the most important things. It's more important than wealth. Um, it helps you keep your vitality. If you have help, you have hope. And we know that a healthy body and a healthy mind help, helps you have a good life. We also know that technology has revolutionized our lives in the last 40, 50 years, starting with 1947 when the transistor was invented, and this transistor sort of underpins all digital technology. Uh, back to the time when I was in college, which is you know a million years ago to most of you, um, only 0.05% of people were using the internet. It's kind of crazy to think of a time before widespread internet and widespread digital technology, but um, it's not that long ago. Um, but now we all live in the information age and everything from healthcare to technology to um, our shopping preferences, our, our reserving hotels, all of these things, everything we do seems to be related to technology. So here at the University of Illinois, we asked the question, how about health? What about health? How does technology intersect with health? And we became interested in the future of health technology and how the future of health technology has the ability to empower the independence of older adults and people with disabilities, to serve diverse populations, increase our social interaction, promote health and health monitoring, and provide access to timely and actionable information while being user-friendly and personalized. So how are we going to get to this future of health technology? And the way that we um, see this coming is the need for a new breed of professionals who are ready and trained to design, develop, test, and implement these technologies. So we here at the University of Illinois recently created the MS in Health Technology to help us engage in the future of health technology. So the MS in Health Technology is a one-of-a-kind program. We did a study prior to starting the program and found that there was really nothing like what we were proposing to do anywhere in the country and really anywhere in the world. Um, one of the things that's very unique about our program is that all majors are welcome. You don't have to have a, a necessarily a techn technology background or a health background to come in. We do have some prerequisite courses, but you could come from any background. And in fact, our first class of students has um, students with a wide variety of backgrounds ranging from anthropology to computer science. Um, it's a one year professional program that will jumpstart your career in health technology. So this is a collaborative program between the College of Applied Health Sciences and the Granger College of Engineering. 
And just a few statistics up here about the College of Applied Health Science and the Granger College of Engineering. The College of Applied Health Sciences has been a leader in kinesiology, speech language pathology, audiology, public health, and also a leader in um, disability resources. The Granger College of Engineering is the number 10 best engineering school in the country. It's a top engineering program programs, um, including some of the ones listed here. And um, it's a great collaboration between these two colleges to create this master's. A little bit about the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I too am from California, just like many of you, I presume. And um, the idea of moving to the Midwest was a bit intimidating to me. But I want to tell you that uh, Champaign-Urbana is a wonderful place to live and attend school. Uh, we have a fantastic campus that's beautiful and large um, and filled with faculty that are renowned in their field. Um, we're a Research One institution. We're part of the Big Ten, if you're into those college sports and whatnot. Uh, it's one of the most accessible campuses in the world for people with disabilities. And our student population is around 32,000 students and our graduate student population is around 15,000 students. We have incredible partnerships with um, various organizations that are local to us. The Carl Illinois College of Medicine, there's Research Park and University at the University of Illinois. Um, and Champaign-Urbana is a wonderfully diverse micro-metropolitan area or micro-urban area. And it has a lot of great features, including it's very affordable place to live, it's accessible, the transportation is really easy, uh, the arts are great, and it's a very friendly community. So a little bit more about Champaign-Urbana. We have a lot of things going on um, in the area for technology and art. Uh, there's a lot of parks you can visit. And we have free public transportation to students at the University of Illinois, so you can get around without a car very easily. Champaign-Urbana is also within a two to three hour driving distance of three major metropolitan areas, Chicago, St. Louis, and Indianapolis. We're kind of right in the center of all those places, so it's really easy to get to a big urban area if you're missing some city life or big city life, we're a micro urban area. Um, another aspect of our community here at University of Illinois is a really exciting development, the McKechnie Family Living in Interactive Future Environments Home. And the reason I'm telling you about this is because this is a smart home that has been developed. You can see the orange area in the photo contains a living space, and then there's an observation and control center where people can do research and simulate, you know, using smart technology in the home. And you could bring in participants for studies who can play with a robot or an app or things like that. Um, and we have special access to this smart home through the health technology program. So we have a Health Technology Innovation Lab, which is like a makerspace where students can come and work with different technology, prototype things, and then deploy it later in the living space. We also have a conference room that the MS in Health Technology program can use for courses or for events. So it's a really uh, unique space. The vision of the MS in Health Technology program is to educate the next generation of applied health technology professionals. We are STEM certified and we're a one year professional program. So this is a great opportunity to get in, quickly get your degree behind you and launch yourself into your career in health technology. And scholarships are available with our program. 
The mission of the Master of Science in Health Technology is to develop interdisciplinary practitioners through classroom education, experiential learning, who will gain the knowledge, skills, and abilities to advance health technology design and implementation. This is where that, that union of the Applied Health Sciences College and the Granger College of Engineering comes together. We're developing interdisciplinary practitioners who are not just uh, engineers, not just health science professionals, but who have that mixture of health technology. So what specific skills will you gain in our program? The first is a comprehension of varying user needs. So understanding how people with different backgrounds and different abilities have different needs when it comes to health technology. Next, knowledge of human factors, tools, and techniques. So really understanding how human factors can be deployed in the, in the space of health technology. We'll have familiarity with research methods, theory, and data analytics. Understanding of hardware components like sensors, wearables, devices. Facility with software, so rapid prototyping, simulation tools. Awareness of regulations, policies, and standards. So how does the FDA regulate certain types of technology that uh, might be relevant in the health field, for example. Appreciation of ethical issues in design and implementation. And strong communication skills so that when you leave our program, you can go out in the world and make a professional pitch to whomever you need to, whether it be your pitch at a job interview or a pitch of a device uh, or an app, a wearable, whatever you're interested in. So the typical health technology student schedule is gonna look like this. It's heavy in the fall semester with lots of great courses, including three of our required core courses one on understanding users of health technology, one on human factors methods in health technology, and then hardware engineering for health technology. The great thing about these classes and also the software class in the spring is these classes are tailored, tailorable to your level of experience. So we don't expect that everybody coming in has a background in electrical and computer engineering or computer science to be successful in this program. The hardware engineering and the software engineering courses in particular are designed to accommodate students with varied backgrounds. So the project that you'll be doing in those classes is tailored to your level of expertise. We're gonna push you and, and have you expand your knowledge and expand your expertise but you're not gonna be in a situation where you're competing with people who have a degree in engineering and um, you're doing the same type of projects. Um, so that's a, a really unique part of this program is it's very tailorable to your interests and needs. Another aspect of its tailorability is the elective classes that you'll take in this program. So you'll get three elective courses, one in the fall, one in the spring, and then you'll see weaving through this, this, this semester schedule of all the semesters, is a capstone course. So in the fall, you have a capstone orientation course, which will orient you to the different capstone projects available the year you are there. And then in the spring, you'll take a capstone development course, where you will dive into the capstone project that you've been matched with from fall semester and really develop the idea, maybe do some prototyping, do a literature review, you know, get really familiar with this concept of what you're going to be working with. And then the summer is totally devoted to the capstone implementation. So in the summer, you will be in that real world setting, developing the technology or the heuristic or um, the testing of, of a device. You'll be out there doing it. So then this again is our curriculum. It really emphasizes users, human factors, methods, software and hardware engineering, 
and that capstone project that makes it such a great experience because you get to really apply in an experiential world, real world situation, what you're learning. So I want to dig in a little bit to what these classes are a little bit more. Um, so human fat, I'm just going to highlight a couple of the classes and then talk about how the electives can shape your experience here at Illinois. So for human factors methods, you're going to do things like understand socio-technical systems and heuristics and human factors methods for user-centered design, um, needs assessment, uh, learning about standards, task analytic methods and um, ability to select and implement healthcare tasks, um, here, like I said before, heuristics, and just all of these things to enable you to really test and create in the health technology space. Next, I'm gonna highlight the software engineering for, for health technology in our program. Uh, this course is really helping you understand um, virtual reality, understanding software that's designed for uh, things like programming Alexa, and understanding Java, Python, MATLAB, and it's, you're not going to dive deep into any of these things. This is kind of an overview course, but you're going to become very familiar with all these things so that when you get into a real world situation and you're on a team, you're going to be that human factors expert and you're going to be able to interface and interact with uh, the designers and the engineers and really add to that multidisciplinary team in real life. So we have um, sort of some examples of elective clusters that students might choose. You might focus on exercise behavior and take classes related to that. You might focus on neurodiversity and take classes that are electives related to that. Analytics, robotics, computer science, apps and wearables, aging and technology. All of these things are uh, sample clusters of courses that you can take to advance your understanding of a specific area within health technology. So I want to talk a little bit more about that capstone project that uh, I talked mentioned previously. The capstone is located within industry, community organizations, academia, even regulatory agencies. And projects are going to be diverse and dependent on the needs of the partner industry or community agencies. So a sample or an example of what could be an, a capstone project would be working with industry or a startup company, um, looking at the usability of assessments of virtual um, extra games. And so in that um, project, you'd be paired with industry and a startup company and you'd be out there doing these assessments. Another capstone that you might think about is uh, in the clinical or research side and you might be looking at prescriptive assist, prescribing assistive technologies in a rehabilitation center. So how to customize these types of um, technologies. So one of the things that we wanted to know before we started this program, because this is a new program where we are in our first year this year, we're very excited. Um, but we wanted to know from health technology experts, is there really a need for this kind of a program? Are there going to be job opportunities for our students? And what we found when we surveyed um, health technology experts in the field is they were very supportive of our program and the way it was designed, saying that there is a dire need for this unique program in the healthcare industry, and that overall the program seems excellent. Furthermore, um, an overwhelming majority of these experts felt that the MS in health technology will be very valuable for educating applied health professionals, and they are looking to hire people from this type of program because of the skills and background that you will gain while you're here at University of Illinois. So 
career possibilities. Um, there's a wide variety of possibilities of ways you can go with this degree. Applied cognitive scientist, cognitive systems engineer, data decision analyst, human factors engineering researcher, visual designer, usability engineer, user experience lead or user experience expert, uh, junior or senior agronomist, ergonomist, sorry. Um, and so we feel very confident that our students will come out of this program and launch straight into a great career. These are just sample job titles we've seen in the past year that have popped up um, that our students will be prepared for. An important question that many students want to know is what is the potential salary in these types of careers? So we did some market, some research on this using Glassdoor and various other sources, but uh, we found that starting salaries were looking at 75K to 110K was the sort of mean area that we're looking at. So you can see that this is going to be a very lucrative career to be to becoming involved with. Another exciting aspect of our program is the advisory board that we have put together for the MS in Health Technology. These are industry and community partners who serve as a resource to our students and to our program. They will offer students career advice, job search assistance, networking help. Um, they're just a great board of individuals. So this just shows you some of the organizations that we are tapped into. Um, the AMA, Smith's Medical, AbbVie, some different um, healthcare organizations, AARP, there's a lot of great organizations that we have representatives from on our board. So what can you do to prepare for a career in health technology? As I mentioned earlier, we do have prerequisite coursework. Um, these courses are meant to sort of help level the playing field, just like our HT core courses will, but you, you'll wanna have a, a, a background in um, introduction to computer science, introduction to psychology, introduction to public health, um, statistics, linear algebra, and research methods. And we have also found courses on Coursera, which is a MOOC platform, that if you're working towards your degree and you don't have a lot of time in your program to pick up another elective that might fulfill one of these requirements, we accept Coursera courses um, as, as fulfilling the prerequisite coursework for our program. We also have pretty generous scholarships within the health technology program. We have the Health Technology Innovator Scholarship. Um, and it, everyone who applies into our program is automatically considered for scholarships if they are uh, accepted. And the scholarships range from $1,000 to $10,000 for the academic year. We also have other graduate college scholarships available at the University of Illinois. And you can contact us for a detailed list of these, of these scholarship opportunities um, if you want to find more opportunities for help with your graduate uh, degree. Some of you might be thinking, I'm really interested in health technology and I'm not sure what the right program is for me. Um, I want to emphasize that what I've been talking about here today is the Master of Science in Health Technology. It's a one-year professional master's program that's a collaboration with the Applied Health Sciences and the Granger College of Engineering. But we also have within our community health department here at Illinois, um, a Master of Science and a PhD, which are more of a research track rather than an applied professional track. Um, and that program is the health technology from design to implementation. Your degree would be in community health, uh, but you would have that specialization or concentration within the program. So I wanna encourage you to apply. We will be accepting applications for fall 2021. In uh, October, we'll open up our applications. 
uh, as I said before, scholarships are available. And um, if you have any questions at any time, please send us an email, check out our website, uh, give us a call, whatever works for you. And I don't know if there's any questions that have popped up yet, but I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Yes, yeah, so first and foremost, thank you so much, Nicole, for sharing all of that information, that data, and all of that information was mind blowing. I didn't even know mm -hmm. that even exi existed. So I learned a lot on my end. So yes, we don't have any in the moment, but anybody, oh, we got one. So we have okay. one question. What is an estimation for tuition? So out of state tuition is, and I'm assuming most of the students would be coming from California, that most of your students are residents in California. So out of state tuition is 40,000 for the whole year. So it's an investment upfront to um, launch your career into the health technology field. And as I mentioned before, we do have scholarships available as well to help defer, defray those costs. Okay. And yes, anybody, if you have any burning questions, please put them into the Q&A box. It's right below your screen. Put, it out, put those burning questions in. We got another one here. What are some exam requirements for acceptance? Exam requirements? So for to apply for the program, um, there is the GRE general test is required. Okay. Um, and then you will need to complete our application and there's an essay in there where you have to talk about your innovation, you know, how you've innovated in the past and then your interest in health technology. Um, and you want to have those prerequisite courses done as well. But that's a really good question. You know, what are the requirements to apply? Alrighty, so another one uh, sent a, a question saying, is there housing available for graduate students? Yes, we have housing. Uh, we have a couple of different housing options on campus and there's lots of off campus options as well. So there's um, students have apartments that are on campus as part of the University of Illinois. There's a couple of different places where you can go and live on campus, some that are more centralized to campus and some that are a little south of campus and you would just take our buses in. But our, you know, like I said, our bus um, system is very good and it's uh, free to students. So that's a great option. Yes, I even saw, a, I never heard of Urbana Champagne and just seeing it, it looks so beautiful. I've always been, I always admired the East Coast and they always have the Four <laughs> Seasons and it's just so beautiful. So it looks like a great place to live. It Alrighty. is a beautiful, it is a beautiful campus and it's a really nice place to live, especially if you're, if you have a family, um, there's good schools here and um, it's just a comfortable place to be. Awesome, awesome. So we have another question. Does the university offer fellowships for graduate students? So fellowships, I'm gonna go back up for a minute. Um, okay. For the professional degree in the MS in Health Technology, um, there are not fellowships available, but there are fellowships available if you were to apply to the MS or PhD in Community Health. Um, they're just sort of different programs. So since ours is a one year professional program, it's very quick. You're in and you're out in one year. Um, there's less opportunity for actual fellowships, but there still are other scholarships you can apply for. Okay. So it looks like the question box is empty at the moment. But I'll give time okay. to anybody who has any further uh, any further questions or any burning questions to ask. But while we wait for that, would you like to say any final remarks? Yeah, I mean, I just want to say that um, I am also from California. I grew up in the Central Valley. I went to college at UC San Diego. And uh, I moved out to the Midwest when I was 21 or 22, um, and I, I have stayed, you know, I've been here for 20 years now, and I really enjoy, uh, more than 20 years, I really enjoy living in the Midwest. It's, um, like I said, very affordable place to live, um, 
lots of great people and champaign urbana is a very diverse community and there's a lot of cultural resources on campus um, in addition to academic and professional resources awesome awesome well thank you again uh nicole for sharing that information with us and and joining us for today we truly appreciate it and i want to thank, thank everyone you very much. <laughs> you're welcome of course of course and thank you everyone for attending the university of illinois at urbana champaign college of applied health sciences virtual presentation as mentioned earlier this recording will be available to our career center's youtube channel and will be sent to your student email thank you again nicole for joining us today we truly appreciate it Thank you very much. And anytime anyone has questions, feel free to shoot us an email. Yes, yes, screenshot it while you can. So if you have those <laughs> questions later on and you're, you're embarrassed to share it here, please email them. I bet they can really help answer those questions for you. Thank you, Nicole. Yes, thank you. Thank you.